Well, hey, Brad. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. Uh, welcome well, to our show, really. I was going to say my show, but I guess I should, uh, I should, you've been co-hosting with me now for, what is it, five episodes, so I feel like I guess I should at least give you that credit of it's our show. Well, I was going to say that you were co-hosting with me, to be honest. I thought you were more the sidekick. Oh, really? I, yeah, see, I'm I've well, always viewed myself as the Batman and you the Robin. Well, I, I, if we're going to bring, you know, that sort of thing, I think I would look better in spandex. Wow. Yeah, I think I would look better in black. You would look better in red. Well, black, you know, hides a multitude of sins, doesn't it? So. <laughs> well, either way, man, it's good to see you. We've had a bit of a hiatus. Uh, you've been away traveling a bit, and uh, I've been sat here, basically. Um, drinking. Drinking. Uh, all the projects that I told you I was going to have done by the time you got back are not done, okay. uh, which I don't think is a surprise to anybody, but... Here we are. So how we can briefly, how was your trip? And then we can jump, we can jump right into today's hot topics. Uh, yeah, trip was good. So I was in, um, San Antonio in Texas for, uh, primarily a conference. That's what paid for the trip. And then uh, a couple of days hanging out with some friends of ours for, for one of their birthdays. So a shout out to Jess for her birthday. I know she's shout one out of to the, Jess. Uh, happy birthday, Jess. Yeah. Happy belated birthday to Jess. I know she's one of the few listeners we have. So, <laughs> you know. Uh, we should also we should also give a shout out to Chris as well because he's not a listener. But if we give him a shout out, he'll have to listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you know that's the hook. Once once they're hooked, so we give him the shout out, and then the uh, nasty text messages or tweets or something of calling him out on it. So yeah, shout out yeah, to not, Chris. We better yeah. we better be hearing from you. We better see a tweet or something. Yeah, we better do. And I, you know, I think if people want to send in their birthdays, I'm happy to do birthday requests and shout outs. You know, if if it's going to increase the listenership, I, I'm not afraid to whore myself. For listeners. Nope, nope, not at all. You got a product you want sponsored? You want to donate some beer or something to the to the podcast? We're more than happy to, uh, yeah, sell out hard. Yeah, yeah. I am. I am not a proud man. <laughs> I am not a proud man. Let me put it that way. Uh, so yeah, I was at San Antonio for a um, parasitology conference. Obviously, our our scientific field, which is really good. Uh, and San Antonio, the home of the uh, the Alamo. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the, the bastion of American history. But to me, it was just too hot. If, if I'd have been defending that place, I would have just let them take it. It yeah. was, yeah, it's like, boys, there's no air conditioning in here. Take it. <laughs> I don't want it. I'm, I'm going, I'm going where there's shade. By that logic, which, then you would have given them all of the lower half of the U.S., probably up to the Canadian border. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As I said, I'm not a proud man. <laughs> uh, right on. So while you were down there, I'm sure um, lots of things were abuzz. But I mean, the thing I think we got to hit on first, I mean, before we get into the doom and gloom of any of the political stuff, let's uh, the, 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 the awe-inspiring, the, the Olympics, the Olympic Games. Oh, I, th- I thought you were talking about my presentation in San Antonio from it, which was <laughs> truly awe-inspiring. But no, you're right. Yeah, the Olympics. And actually, that brings me straight to a question on the Olympics. Did Canada even have a team? Are you, are you, do you almost, you're hurting me here right now. Of course. I, 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 really? I, I've not, I've not seen you on the medals table. Oh, okay. Well, we're 14th as of today. Oh, okay. 14th, uh, which is, I think, pretty damn good for a nation no, of good. 33 million people where nobody gives a shit about the, the summer Olympics. Olympics. We're like one of eight countries that give a shit about the winter Olympics. Uh, so yeah, summer's not really our thing, but we have a medal in the arguably the 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 highest draw of all the summer Olympics, men's one hundred meter sprinting, uh, the bronze I medal. Say, I th- I thought you were going to say when you said the biggest draw, I thought you were going to say beach volleyball. Yeah, that's true. Actually, that's probably the that's probably the biggest that's probably the biggest draw. Oh yeah, no, no, okay, yeah, I take that back because isn't, isn't there a bit of a bromance, isn't there, going on between yeah Usain Bolt and whoever your guy is, nobody knows the name of <laughs> Usain, Usain Bolt's underling. Yeah, <laughs> basically, Andre de Grasse is his name, um, and uh, yeah, he was uh, our guy was talking a bit of shit before the races, saying he's you know Usain Bolt's not in the best of shape and he's going to take him down or he wants to take him down. Um, but he didn't, obviously. Uh, but he's like, yeah, Usain Bolt, I think, has even said, you know, this is the next guy. This is the next big guy to watch. And we've had, we've had, you know, famous sprinters in the past. Donovan Bailey. 
believe he won gold in 1996 or no 2000 I can't remember one of those and then you yeah. know our most famous Canadian sprinter Michael Johnson who got busted for steroids and had his medal stripped back in the wow. 1980s I, I, yeah okay I didn't even know he was Canadian so. so don't say that Canada's not on the summer Olympic stage my friend well, to be fair, when you said Andre de Grasse, it sounded more like a gangster name to me. It's like Andre the Rat or something like that. <laughs> Andre of Grass in yeah, the I'll, French. I'll, t- yeah. I'll, t- I'll tell you who the drug cheats are. I'll yeah. tell you who they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Well, I hope our guy doesn't. I hope he doesn't get uh, get busted himself for doping. Because to be honest, I who knows? I'm sure they're all doing something or at well, some that, level. That, well, that I was going to say, I, I've not, I don't think I've heard of a single drug failure yet. I've heard of a couple of you sent home, there was the Egyptian guy sent home for not shaking hands with the Israeli guy during the judo bank, I think, and there's oh, really? you know, some other guys sent home for other stuff, but I've not heard anyone sent home for failing a drugs test yet, which maybe that's just because Russia aren't competed, you know. But. Well, they are there, but apparently they're, uh, they're, they're being a bit cleaner, I guess, than than they maybe normally would. But like, let's be honest: how many? How many? It's not just the Russians. Like, America's dominating the medal table, and which they usually do, just based on population and how much money they pump into it. But they're not all clean. Let's be real. Not all the Canadians are clean. I'm sure either. It's, okay, it's a reason we. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to say the British are. So oh, um, give me a break. You know, if, if anyone's listening to this, you know, sue my co-host, not me. So you know, we stand independently on this. I'm not. I'm not going to have with you, Flash. I love you dearly, but you know, <laughs> when the lawyers come knocking to make us bankrupt, it's all on you, my friend. Man, I will not be silent. I'm just a truth teller out here, <laughs> telling the truth to the people, like I've always done. Flash to grass, effectively. That's what we start calling you. <laughs> No, nah. I mean, I, I love the Olympics. Like, I get hooked in every every four years, you know, and, and obviously Winter Olympics is a bit more of a draw for us Canadians, but mm, I enjoy it. Here. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, we're one of eight, you know, nations that can afford to buy skis and skates and all the rest of it for our, <laughs> <laughs> for a whole team of athletes. But... uh well, and it also has a winter. That's the you know we. That's I the big imagine, thing. I imagine we've probably got some cash knocking around. We could do that. We just don't have the winters here to practice. Well, yeah, you send them to Canada to train, you know. But well, much much like our Eddie the Eagle Edwards. Exactly. That's right. That's right. Um, but I mean, yeah, the, the Olympics. It's like there's so much, and especially this one. I don't know if this is where you wanted to go with this, but it was. Uh, I mean, it seems like there's been a bit of issues. I mean, surprisingly going well considering all the doom and gloom that was that was yeah. spouted out before but well and you touched on it earlier i'm a bit like every year or well, every year every four years i always forget so the olympics for me i don't really follow that much i follow the tennis because i'm a big tennis fan although i'm not strictly sure that tennis should be in the olympics but maybe we can touch on that as well um but then it, I, every time it comes around, I'm like, yeah, I'm not interested. And then within the first two days, I'm hooked. So I'm yeah. up to like one, two in the morning watching the, you know, men's Kirin cycling. I've got no idea what the rules are. <laughs> yeah. All these obscure sports that, and I popped to the pub last night and it just it amazes me. Everyone's talking about the Olympics, obviously, but suddenly everyone's become an expert on, well, beach volleyball, on judo, on. You know, it's like you guys don't even know these sports exist. Yeah. You know, for three, three and a bit years, you know, every cycle, and now suddenly you're the world's biggest expert. Oh, well, you know, if you'd got that start right and come out with a bit more of a sprint in the first lap, yeah, yeah. you could have had a chance of it. Really? Yeah, the shot put technique was all off. It was shit, really. I can't yeah. believe they even let him into the competition with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it's like. Uh, I don't know what it's like for the British media. Like, I feel like maybe you guys might be a bit more critical, or even just like the people in the pub. Like, I don't know if you criticize your athletes a lot, but in Canada, oh, yeah. It's, yeah, in, yeah. in Canada, it's all like, good try. Oh, you got eight. Good job. You know, like that's better than we've ever done in some stupid, you know, swimming event or something. But you know, <laughs> good job. Oh, they that's just nice. they just missed the cut. You know. Because it is it's like, Canadian, yeah, it is. It's 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 so it's so ridiculous. I mean, people get people are disappointed, obviously, when they do bad. But there's not there's not a whole lot of open criticism. Because to be honest, and I kind of agree, it is like, well, you made it, you know. And especially coming from Canada, 
to be a summer Olympian and, and just get there is a big, is a big thing. So when we do, but when we do have, you know, the big, the, the winners, they, they get treated quite, quite well in the media. Like we had this 16 year old gal that, that cleaned up on some medals and swimming. And so that right. was, uh, that was, that was big news for Canada. But yes, yeah, we had, um, uh, our friend Steve from where's my glasses fame shout out to Steve. He was, he was visiting us this last weekend all the way over here in Germany. Oh, of course. And, uh, yeah, we ended up the same thing. You know, you're watching just these like random obscure events. Although we did watch table tennis, which isn't that obscure, but my God, is that fun to watch? They oh, can, yeah, they yeah, can yeah. just get it going, you know? So that's a really good one. But let me ask you this. What's your favorite? Like, what is, what is the, the obscure event that you found this year or that you? Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. So as I, as I said, I am a, I am a big tennis fan. So that lasts me on. But in terms of obscure ones, I guess it's been, I guess some of the cycling ones. And I guess that, you know, it helps that Team GB have done so well in the cycling. So it gets a lot of coverage here. But like the, the men's omnium, which is you know six events, eight events of differing things in the velodrome, absolutely breathtaking to watch. And I don't know if you've seen any of them at all. With I think they call it the points, the points race, where every it's like 150 laps, but every 10 laps there's a sprint, and you get points for being in the top four. Hmm. So every 10 laps, everyone will literally go health of a leather to be across that line. And then if you if you catch up with the back of the pack. Then you get twenty points, so you know, there's an incentive to put your foot down and try and catch up and lap the field. Huh. So, so that's one to watch. But then the race before that is, I think it's called the elimination. So there's, Ooh, that just sounds know. like the eliminator. It, oh, it sounds like gladiators. Yeah. You know, some guy to come out with a poop or stick and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, so in that one, all the riders set off, um, and away where they go, and then um, at some point. Every so many laps, the bell goes. I think it's every other lap. And basically, the last person to cross the line gets eliminated. Oh, wow. So Is it's it like the track a, open up and they fall into a pit? See, now that would be like a Hunger Games type <laughs> mess. It's just some archer at yeah. the top it takes them out. Not, not, not that exciting. I thought I like flashes on the handlebars and then they pull off into the um, Cote d'Azur, which is the blue I've learned around the inside of the velodrome. Okay, there you go. Um, so, yeah, that's... That's probably been the most fascinating to watch, and I guess it helps that we've done reasonably well in the cycling to wet my wet my whistle. What about yourself? Have you found some obscure ones in there? Um, I found myself watching uh, women's weightlifting, which was <laughs> <laughs> for the listeners out there that aren't seeing it. I literally just spat my drink over my laptop. <laughs> it was it was uh, interesting to say the least. Um, I watched some men's weightlifting as well, which I mean. Let's be honest. No, you didn't mention that first. You went straight to the women's there, didn't you? It was more, way more interesting. The characters okay. were much more um, uh, enthralling. I don't know. Engrossing <laughs> is the word, maybe. Um, but I was going to say, let's be honest, though. And I mean, in a lot of these events, are you not just looking for the car crash? Are you not? Like, I, I, I love, you know, the the inspiring success stories. But I also, and probably even more so, love the crushing defeat like cycling it's like it's all about a big wreck that's what i wanted you know that's what we're all here for let's be real well, yeah wasn't there the so it, it touched the news late here the two german female marathon runners that they came in like 70th place or something but they've caused uproar in germany and you may you may not have heard this because they they crossed the finish line and they held hands going with the finish line together oh and um, basically, in the the German Olympic Committee have said that you know it's a disgrace. It, the, the quote was, "It's like they treated it as a fun run." <laughs> now, I'm sorry, anyone that's just run a marathon and completes it, I think they can pretty much do whatever they want on the finish line because I'd never do it. And if they've got the wherewithal to cross with their teammate, holding hands and smiling, fair play to them. I, that to me, I find inspiring. Yeah. Apart from some some guy and obviously, well, they treated it like a fun run, obviously with a German <laughs> accent, which I didn't do. Yeah, they treated it like a fun run, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a fun run. Yeah. Um, no, I did not hear that. Yeah, that seems like a bit, that seems a bit overkill. Yeah, Especially when it's so. like, it's not like they were first and second here. It's like, we're talking about the, the bottom of the... Um, yeah, th yeah, they didn't forgo a medal position, yeah. you know. They're just pleased they competed in the Olympics and finished. Yeah. 
fair play to them. Yeah. No, I mean, that's nice. I didn't hear about that. But like, forget all that nice stuff. I wanted to see, I wanted to see somebody's arm fall off while they were lifting those weights or, you know, like, you know, their, their knees give out and buckle while they drop the, the giant weight thing on, which I unfortunately did not see. Although apparently some guy did his arm, his shoulder just like popped right out during it. Was, um, was it. I can't remember which event it was. I want to say it's one of the gymnastic events. Maybe it was the pommel. No, it wasn't the pommel horse. The guy with the broken the f- leg? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the French athlete with the broken leg. And the, the pictures I saw, he's got a broken leg, but he's still smiling. That's what I don't get. Yeah. But then what I didn't didn't see at the time, and I've had to go out and look, is they put him on the stretcher and then they drop him. <laughs> As they're carrying him off, they dropped him off the stretcher. <laughs> <laughs> so there you are. There's, there's that seems like the something that crash. would happen in The Simpsons or something. You know, <laughs> there's the car crash you wanted to see twice I know, over. I know, and I missed it. I missed it. Well, oh, the, you, the picture I saw you, of the guy with YouTube. the broken leg. Get, get, get with that. Yeah, it's not as it's not as good secondhand. You know, you got to see it live, right? But the the pictures yeah, well, the, the pictures I did see of him were um, it just it looked like he was more like. Oh, are you fucking kidding me? A broken leg? Like, like it wasn't like pain. It was just like, and this is what Steve was saying too. He's like, look at this guy. This is hilarious. He's showing me the picture and he's, it's more just like annoyance. You know, he's like, ah, yeah. I ruined my perfect score or something. And his leg is like 90 degree angle. <laughs> it's just like the, uh, the knight from the Holy Ghost. It's just a flesh wound. It's yeah. Just a flesh yeah. Wound. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, no, so so I didn't see any horrible weightlifting injuries, but um, I was really surprised at like it's the guy who won the men's competition that I was watching. It's a guy from Iran, short little dude with the biggest like beer gut, like just hanging out over his weightlifting belt in that like unitard suit, and he's beating out all these like huge Lithuanian and like Norwegian looking dudes that like actually look ripped, you know, like they have like built physique. They look yeah. like athletes. This guy did not look like an athlete. And same in the women's competition. They did not look like athletes. I mean, obviously the, this is the cream of the crop of, of the sport of weightlifting and there's different muscles involved and stuff like this. And size I'm assuming helps because these people were huge, but it was just like, I was just like, if you saw that person on the bus, you'd be like, Oh, that person needs to, you know, run some laps or something. Yeah, that's probably not good for their health. And then there they are in the Olympics. So I was just like, I was like, oh, okay. This is weightlifting is not a thing that I, I know anything about. But the one that I really am disappointed I missed, and I only found out that it existed today after it had finished, it's called Steeplechase. Have you heard of this one? Uh, that's the track event in it where you, you jump every... Every lap or something. Well, it's like, it's like a, it's like an obstacle course. There's like water yeah, obstacles yeah. and stuff. And I guess it's based on an equestrian event or something. And I was just like, this sounds awesome. This sounds more like, you know, American gladiators or something. I was like, this is what I want to see. And, uh, so it'd be, it'd be better if they did the staple, ch- staple chase with like those fake hobby horses. <laughs> yeah. Just the, like the broomstick with a horse head on yeah. the top. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I th- again, I thought you were going to say with like archers bearing down on them or, or those. <laughs> no. uh, did you guys get American gladiators in the UK? Um, we had our own version. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, you know, like the giant tennis ball gun that they would shoot at? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. what I want to see. I mean, that just work, add, let's, let's just add that to like every event. That would spice it up a little bit. <laughs> Do you see the um, talking of uh, fails and the media coverage? Uh, I didn't see it, but I read in the, the paper, the, the Japanese pole vaulter. No. Oh. Uh, so, and it's down to the, basically he's had to come out and say it's down to the camera angle. And now basically the media have ruined his life back home. Um, he failed to meet the bar, but from the camera angle, it looks like he failed to meet the bar because his penis <laughs> took out the bar. And it wasn't, it was actually his thigh that hit it beforehand. <laughs> but the way the camera looks, it was his penis. So, of course, the media picked up, you know, this Japanese guy's penis has stopped him going through into the semifinals. Yeah. Well, you think that'd be um, a good thing for him. He's like, yeah, it's too big, you know, the, yeah, the yeah, unitard exactly. just can't even keep it in place, you know. This package well, I got here is... Yeah, well, exactly that. When I saw the headline, I was like, oh, brilliant. They've, um, you know, I can't, the exact headline escapes me, but it, it was media, Japanese pole vaulter media. That, that was the sort of power words, the buzzwords yeah. in there. Uh, and I was like, oh, brilliant. Yeah, you know, he's doing exactly that. He's marketing himself for uh, having a giant schlong. Yeah. Uh, but no, quite the opposite. He was like, oh, how dare you? You know, you're making a mockery of my sport. 
So, uh, yeah. Sorry, you got, your, your sport's you got, a bit got, of a joke. <laughs> you got more headlines this way than you would on any other. So you know. Yeah, man, run with that and see how many uh, see how many ladies are waiting for you at the airport when you come back. Go yeah, exactly. That's is it okay? That's not as, is it okay? Is it not, bruised? That's not as pole down his trunks. Yeah. As, uh, <laughs> I think. So, so I touched, touched on it earlier. What's your view on? some of the professional sports being involved. So obviously this year, golf was the big controversial one because obviously most of the professional golfers refused to go over the Zika thing. Yeah. I I have a real, as I said, I'm a big tennis fan. And I, you know, I stayed up to two in the morning to watch Andy Murray win. So brilliant. But I just think for me, the Olympics is about sports that don't normally get TV coverage, that are, coverage that are a little bit more obscure. Yet suddenly we've got these people that earn millions of pounds a week doing these sports suddenly say, well, you know, I'm not getting paid for two weeks. It's okay. I can com- compete. That doesn't fit with the Olympic spirit to me. What, any any thoughts on that, Flash? It doesn't bother me in the slightest. I mean... You don't care. No. As long, would... as long as there's a car crash for you to watch. Exactly. You don't care if they're getting paid or not. Yeah, no, I, I could care less, you know. Um, no, I mean, we have this debate all the time with uh, the hockey players, the ice hockey players uh, in the winter. Sorry, no idea, no idea what that sport is. <laughs> It's only the greatest, fastest sport in the world. So, I mean, <laughs> you really should get on board. It's a shame that only eight nations really play it. Although uh, India is working real hard to get a, to get a, well, I mean, I well, think. Well, yeah, they, they've got lots of ice rinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah so up in the mountains. Be a problem. Up in the mountains, they sure do. There's, I think, I say India is working real hard to get a uh, international ice hockey team. But I think it's like 15 dudes. And then a couple American guys from Minnesota that have gone over to, you know, it's a real mighty duck story. There's there's always a couple of American guys from Minnesota milling around somewhere. Yeah. (laughs) But as far as the, as far as the professional athletes things go, it's like, to me, the Olympics is about the best against the best. And, you know, why not let the best play? I, I, you know, it, it doesn't, doesn't bother me at all that they're professional athletes. If these are, you know, it's uh, yeah. I guess it's unfortunate for the amateur athletes, but sorry, you're an amateur. Like you're just not good enough. So, <laughs> like that's just the way it is. Like I don't. And then in terms of like, do we want to highlight sports that don't normally you know get a lot of airplay? Well, no, because I mean, people are already watching these random sports. Like what you and I just discussed, you know, what we were just watching. So you need the big draw sports in order to get people to come and watch and you know like. I don't know. No, it it doesn't bother me in the slightest at all. I want to see the best against the best, and I want to see them hurt each other, and I want to see people, you know, <laughs> fail, and I want to see, you know, all all of it, all the highs and all the lows. Well, because next time around it's in Tokyo, isn't it? So they've is it baseball and softball, or one of the one or either of both? They they let in. It's like, well, come on, guys. The, the World Series features it best two countries. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so come on, really? What you know? Why is that? And, and I know softball is big in Japan, but yeah. really, baseball is big in Japan. Um, I mean, yeah, you already see the best players play in in the world. It's the same again. It's the same with with ice hockey. Not 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 just the best, but the only players. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they're good enough from other countries, they come and play in the major leagues, right? Like, there's lots of Cubans and Dominicans and. You know, there's Japanese guys playing in the majors and stuff too. So, I mean, they're obviously good enough to come and make it. So, you're seeing the best on the best. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. So, it's the same. It's the same. Again, I bring it back to hockey because it's what I know and it's the best sport in the world. So, why wouldn't I? Um, <laughs> but it's, you know, they, for the longest time, it was there wasn't a lot of international players coming to play in North America. And now there is because it's the best league and they want to test their skills. And if you can make it in the best league... And now we have, you know, in the back in the days when the amateurs were only allowed to compete. I mean, this was Soviet time, too. So the Russians, they were amateur athletes. I'm doing air quotes here. They were amateur athletes. That just Professional drug takers? Yeah, well, not even. They were just, they were, they, it was the army team. So they, they trained all year round. And they got all the money and all the, you know, everything. So they were basically professionals. But then they would come to the Olympics and just dominate all the all the uh, international teams or all the amateur teams and actually Canada eventually said screw this we're way better than them so we need to have so Canada set up its own tournament and we called it the Canada Cup and we invited the Russians to come and play us and we invited anyone else that was like 
considered themselves good enough uh, to come and play. And so we actually got to pit our professional, our best guys against the Russians. Okay. And then it was actually like we won, you know, and it was good games and it was close games and stuff like this. So then they started letting the professionals back into the Olympics, I think in like 1998. Right. And now it's like one of the best. It's I mean, in terms of Winter Olympics, it's the best, you know, it's the best sport to watch. It gets the most attention. It gets the it draws the most you know, sponsorship and money and airtime and all the rest of it. So, right. you know, I, again, I guess I'm biased because those damn Russians think that they can just, you know, try and claim that they're the best at hockey. It's not true. It's not true, well, Brad. Hey, it's not true. If, if, if they're one of our listeners, then, you know, let's butter them up. They are definitely the best nation in oh, the right. world at, at ice hockey. So if they're one but of our I'm, listeners, I'm going to say, come over here and play a game, buddy. Let's see. Let's see what your record is in the last international tournaments. We've been dominating. The Americans are better at high ice hockey now than the Russians. Did, you okay. know what? The Finns and, and, are probably better than the Russians and, at ice hockey and, right now. And how are the uh, Edmonton Oilers doing? We're, it's, it's, it's terrible. But the season hasn't started. <laughs> and I'm sure they'll be terrible again this year. But we just got to we just got to do Finnish guys. So, you know, maybe that'll turn us around. <laughs> the professional is totally different. Totally different. And I would implore you not to be talking about things that you don't know what you're talking about. Hey, Actually, well, you know what? I take that back because that's what I do basically every time we turn on I was going to say that this podcast would be very, very short if we both stuck to that rule. <laughs> <laughs> so just our, our listeners would be tuning into silence in white noise. Yeah. Great, great to help you sleep. But, yeah, 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 yeah. It would just be a bunch of, oh, can I talk about? No, no, I can't say that. No, uh, no, should I? Mm, no, no, I can't no. say that. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, so that's, I don't know, that's my opinion on it. It's like, I I, I, I want to see the best on the best and I, I have no well, that, problems with it. That's fair enough. But then like, look at boxing. So boxing, they, they just have the amateurs there. And then some of them, you know, if they go on and win a medal, then they, you know, they tend to then turn professional. But you don't see any of the big boxers out there going, yeah, do you know what? I'm going to forgo a paycheck and go and win a gold medal. Yeah, that's their prerogative, I guess. Um, it's also a, a, your longevity in the sport is... <laughs> Is not as long, I don't think, as say tennis or even you know ice hockey or, or any of the team sports for sure. I mean, that's a bit more of a physical commitment. So I think those guys are when they go out to perform, they have to get paid because they need yeah, you know to so. pay for someone to take care of their vegetative body as their brain deteriorates from CTE in their later years. So you know, because <laughs> well, and this year it amazes me because they. They've changed the rules, so that, that's caused some controversy. I don't know if that's hit the news there at all, but it's, one of the rule changes is no head guards. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Which, yeah, which I think, you know, for a sport that's always been trying to defend its image against head injury and brain injury, it's a major change to the rules to say, yeah, do you know what? The, the one thing that gives a little bit of protection with taking away. Do you know why they said that? Um, I don't. I think... Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if it's to make it more of a spectator sport, the fact that somebody might get injured. <laughs> I, I'm not sure that's what they're officially saying. I don't know if that's what the Olympics are. The Olymp Olympics are about, all, they're all about more knockouts. I don't know. Well, well, maybe. And, and that's If they know their viewer see. base, then yes, they should know that, yes, well, that is what we want to see. That's what we want to see. Yeah, we want to see vegetables being wheeled at the ring. Yeah. Um, and then dropped. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, off the stretcher. Yeah, the, the controversy was that they've also changed the scoring system. Um, but it seems that some of the judges haven't quite understood. So I think there's been like three instances now of, um, you know, clearly the guy that won the bout not winning the bout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because I've heard they've about applied, that. they've applied the wrong point. So they've had people booing. And then it, it, the biggest guy, it seems to have happened to this Irish guy who, you know, by accounts, Tranked the guy, you know, give the guy a standing count twice, put a cut above his eye, still lost the bout. And, you know, and then the, the, the amateur boxing associations come forward and said, yeah, yeah, that was a mistake. He should have gone through, but there's no appeal process. Yeah. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. So that's so that guy's ruined. It's like, really? This is the, if this is meant to be the pinnacle of your amateur sport, get it right. Yeah. What a shit show. I just, yeah. tra I chalked that up to boxing just being corrupt as shit, which I'm sure it is. And that's what I, you know. <laughs> Once again, any lawyers listening? That was my co-host, uh, Flash, and uh, not myself. Flash, truth teller. I, uh, you just call me a I, truth teller. 
Well, they could. Yeah, yeah. Good, good luck spouting those truths when you're desolate and bankrupt on the streets living homeless flesh. <laughs> yeah, with the Russian uh, Ice Hockey <laughs> Federation and the, the, what do they call the KGB now? I can't remember, but knocking uh, yeah. on my well, door. And the European Olympic chief. Have you heard this guy? This is the guy that's been arrested for... Uh, the ticket scam? Face- the ticket scam. Yeah. But have you, have you heard the nature of his arrest? No. Well, I heard he's like scalping tickets or something. So, yeah, basically he was... He, some guy got caught with 700 tickets on him that basically came from this guy, this Irish guy who's the, the president or the chair of the EU Olympic Committee. Um, and they've traced it back to this guy. But by all accounts, uh, the police in Brazil turn up at his hotel room um, they either knock on the door or they break the door down. Um, he's not there, but his wife's there. Uh, and his wife says, Oh, no, no, he's gone back to Ireland. He's not, he's not here. He left, he left for Ireland two yeah. days ago. And they're like, Oh, okay. Um, but they decided maybe she's not telling the truth. So they uh, <laughs> reviewed the CCTV footage in the hotel. Um, and then literally went, Next door, hotel room wise, <laughs> and knocked on the door, to which he answered, uh, fully naked. By all accounts, <laughs> who was with him? Uh, by all accounts, he was fully naked, pretending he was uh, asleep uh-huh. uh, and a little bit confused by it all. Uh-huh. Uh, he's now been arrested and you know suspended and whatever. But yeah, brilliant. Yeah, I know where I'll hide. Next door. Yeah, yeah. Next door. Yeah, I guess not the smartest criminal. When, but you know, here, here I'll give you another. I'll give you another truth. When you're as complacent and corrupt as a body is like the IOC and all the rest of the sporting federations, then oh, I'm what's sure going for a legal nightmare. <laughs> I'm sure you don't really think about your escape route or your alibi too much after years and years of just taking the kickbacks. You never okay, thought so- this day would come. I'm starting to reevaluate my career because it seems like episode six I might be presenting by myself at this rate by the time you're <laughs> banged up and bogged down in legal proceedings for the next eight years. Hey man, it ain't slander if it's true. Well, yeah, good good luck with that. So yeah, and I guess the other the other piece that hit the uh, the news here today is uh, the, touching on I guess a little bit of politics as well as the Olympics. The um, the leave campaign. We voted to leave. It's going to happen, but they're yeah. obviously putting more and more pressure that we should get on with it. Um, so they, by all accounts, they've been putting some uh, marketing and publications around with pictures of the Olympic medal winners from Team GB, um, and then in, with slogans basically saying "Leave the EU," uh, implying that these people are, you know, backing that. So actually, the British Olympic Committee today have come out and basically said you've got until five o'clock today to recall every single one of those ads otherwise we're suing your ass yeah um, maybe you need to get their lawyers on board flash because it sounds like uh, <laughs> you can be getting a phone call from the competitors quite soon um so yeah that seems to be what's kicking off here so it's interesting that you know for the olympics it's always meant to be non-political isn't it suddenly it's politics is it's supposed to be I, being dragged into that i did see one i think it was a tweet the leave campaign made a tweet with that featured some athlete and she basically i believe it was a her um tweeted replied to the tweet and was just like uh thanks for the support on the you know the big win or something but i voted stay you know and then put like eu flags or something all in it so i <laughs> i would thank you to not use my image in your campaign or something like this, you know? And yeah, I was just like, that's brilliant. I mean, good hammer back at them, but that's pretty, it's a pretty low down move from the leave yeah. campaign. I mean, are we surprised that they go that low? Not really, but it's... probably not. Well, the, the scary thing here is that, um, so Theresa May, our prime minister is at the country, I think doing a world tour and also on holiday. Um, so the most senior politician that we have in the country Boris. at the moment, it's Boris. So technically, <laughs> Boris is running the country at the moment. Um, we're still here at the moment. The, you mean the, the uh, Boris, uh, Trump's, you know, idiot cousin from the UK <laughs> or something? I, I would like to see the birth certificate because I think there could be some sort of oh, relationship. Let's start the there. birther movement on him. <laughs> you remember Trump's birther movement on Obama? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Show us the birth certificate. Show us Show the us birth certificate. certificate. Yeah. Hey, well, I, I say you, you jump on that flash because you're obviously going down enough blaze of glory Boris with all the, with Boris, all the slander I know you're listening Boris I know you're listening I want to see the birth certificate okay <laughs> okay I want to see the birth certificate the best birth certificate the UK birth certificate I want to see it I want to see it right now <laughs> he says he was born in the UK but how are we supposed to believe him 
I, I say when we, we get this one out, we get that try and get that hashtag trending. <laughs> Boris's birth certificate? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do it, man. That's the BBC. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Boom, you can have that one. The hashtag. Nice. Nice. Well, I don't know. It's, yeah. I was going to uh, try and smoothly, I guess, transition into some. I think More we have. Slanderous to, comments or. I'm on a roll today. It must be this uh, Canadian whiskey that my. Uh, rye whiskey <laughs> that my parents brought over. Uh, it's I haven't had it in a while and it's quite good. It's uh, like Romulan ale. Yeah. 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 <laughs> No, I mean, I think we have to, we, 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 we got some science stories that I think we should get to as well, because that's a, a bit more uplifting than, than some of the other stuff. But I think we, we, we should at least touch on the uh, steaming, you know, pile of garbage on a train that's hurtling towards a cliff that is the uh, U.S. campaign trail at the moment, because <laughs> it is just, it is just, you know, a whole nother level. I mean, I guess... The I want to say that at least, you know, Trump seems to finally be shooting himself in the foot. But I think Hillary is like equally bad for other reasons. And then it brings up this whole this whole thing right now. This I guess the sort of bigger picture discussion for me is Trump has really been able to you know, rile up his supporters by claiming that, you know, the media is unfair and they're biasing the election. Like, I get no positive coverage. And by all accounts, I haven't watched a lot of C- uh, CNN. But by all accounts, CNN is basically full bore behind Hillary and, you know, just hammering on Trump. And, I mean, he brings it on himself with stupid shit that he says. But, I mean, if they're not talking about all of Hillary's faults, the email scandals, like all the other, you know, creepy things that she's done behind closed doors, you know, like then what what is a fair what is a fair and unbiased media like it, i don't think it exists that much in in the us anymore and so it's like you that this speech from john f kennedy was going around on on the internet that i saw where he was it was a couple of days before. is 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 he running for election again yeah yeah back back from the day i i I, th- I think they should vote for him 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 dead would be better than you know <laughs> anything that they got right now But no, it was just like, you know, he was basically imploring the media to be critical to both sides, to himself plus the others, you know, because that's what, and it was just really like rah-rah about the institution and how it's necessary to inform the people and and all this stuff. And it just seems like that is gone. Like, it's just, it's absolutely gone. And so Trump kind of has a point in that it's like, you know, what the, the the media machine is influencing it, but I wonder how much it does. Like, this is, this is just me, you know, sort of reading this stuff and then starting to think out loud about it. How much does it influence it? Because um, he's saying to all of his supporters, if I lose the election, it's because it was rigged. So, I mean, like, <laughs> that's the dangerous thing to start saying. I mean, you're going to have people rioting in the streets because they believe every word this man says. But it's like... The media is, who is the media even talking to at this point? Trump supporters aren't watching CNN. They're watching their own, you know, Trump news. Fox News or whatever, you know. And Democrats are watching CNN and they're seeing all this stuff that we already know. And then I came across a study today that was talking about how the, the candidates, once they get to the general election stage, the hypothesis or the, the thought is always that they then move more to the middle on issues. Because they're yeah. not going to their base anymore like they are in the primaries. But this guy did, you know, so political scientist at Vanderbilt did sort of an analysis and a breakdown of it. And by his metrics, he said that that's not happening. And in fact, they're going more and more to their base as the years go on. He looked at, you know, speeches and stuff from 1980 to up to 2012. And so it's like these people that are in the middle, these swing people in the middle that like feel abandoned by this because they have no candidate and there's no third party option. Are they so apathetic that they then don't vote? So you see record lows of voter turnout in this election. Maybe I'm I'm speculating. And then it's a matter of who has the most rabid supporters that actually go out and vote. And Trump might have that even though like all the polls are showing that he's, he's trailing and he's trailing in the swing states and all this, it's like, if people don't go out and vote, 
you know, and, and, and the Democratic people sort of are a little, yeah, we got this in the bag. I'm just going to sit at home and, and sit this one out. Or you're just a swing person in the middle that is like, you know what? Both these candidates are shit. Yeah. So it's a scary situation. We, yeah. And I, I, I guess in my head, I, I predicted that turnout would be high at this one because both sides would obviously be competing against each other more than normal because they are two. I was going to say crackpots, but I wouldn't dare say that. Alleged uh, extremists, should we say? I'll say for it. Either They're crackpots. The <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're going down. <laughs> um, so, you know, I thought that would maybe drive the snow. But yeah, maybe that middle bank of voters. My worry is that I'm not sure. Is an independent come forward yet? Gary Johnson, Gary, Gary Johnson, the libertarian candidate, I believe will will announce as a as a third party candidate. So if he's that middle of the road, then but he's kind of he's libertarian. So I mean, he might siphon votes away, but there's no way that he's going to. But it sounds like he'd siphon votes away from Clinton more than. Mm, yeah, I don't Trump. know. It's it's tough to say. It's really tough to say because it could go either way. Because with the libertarian stance, they really tend to sort of appeal to both sides, you know, like socially right. to the Democrats in that it's like, we're, we don't want to put restrictions on anybody's, you know, freedoms of whatever. So abortion and all the rest of it, it's like, you can do that. Like we don't. Right. We, but then that also, I guess, works for the Republicans and the Second Amendment and exactly. their guns. Yeah, and, exactly. Right. And okay. then and, and economically, they're more sort of conservative in the sense of just like less government, more free market, let it all out, hey, you know. So there's, there's an idea. Maybe that's how we can we can gain political ground and therefore, you know, more listeners because ultimately, you know, we're, I've already said I'm a listener whore. Yeah. You know, the whole Trump debate over the second amendment where he basically, did he, did he incite people to, to shoot Hillary, to shoot Hillary? Yes. Yes, um, he did. <laughs> thank you. Once again, flash. Don't, don't feel you ever have to sit on the fence. You come down whichever side you want to. I, I maybe, went and maybe, watched the video. I mean, come on. Maybe, maybe, maybe we're the party mm. that basically, doesn't incite any violence and basically says, well, you you may keep your guns, you may not. The sort of the sort of the the eh, we'll think about yeah, it party. Meh, yeah. Meh party. <laughs> party meh. You know what? It, as we'll see. We'll see how this, this whole thing it's only gonna get crazier as we ramp up to uh as we ramp up to November. And I think maybe what what we can try and do as we get closer is take a more focused look at each of the each of the candidates because I think not enough people are talking about how gross Hillary Clinton is, you know. And I wasn't just, a, that wasn't a dig at how she looks and her stupid pantsuits. It wasn't. It was about that she, was yeah. <laughs> me, I would never. Um, <laughs> too late now, my friend. <laughs> You know, too little, too late. I think I think she represents a lot of the things that people don't like with politics, and a lot of the things that you know, the same reasons why you see you know things like Brexit and stuff like that. People being really upset with their politicians for not working for them, and it's so. I think we can focus on that. But I, you know what? There is there is another option that has come out in the U.S. that I am fully on board with. I don't think a lot of people know about this person running for their candidacy yet. But it's uh, the the dark underlord Cthulhu. Are you familiar with Cthulhu? I, I, I'm not. Why don't you uh, enlighten C- myself? Cthulhu is a is a is a giant alien being, uh, famous from H.P. Lovecraft's. He's a he's an old um, science fiction writer from the early 1900s. But he's created this great mythos about the beginnings of the universe and how the universe was actually created and there's a whole series of giant destructive monsters uh dark gods that ruled this planet for years before our recorded history and cthulhu's time has now come to rise up from the ocean because the everything is right uh for him to come back and claim his rightful spot as the top of the american empire and just lay waste to this country and the rest of the world as it should well be cthulhu 2016 i think you should look him up on twitter and you should go to his website page any of you that know about cthulhu you'll find this hilarious um it's it's honestly, it's like it's it's the best parody campaign I've seen in a long time. Other than Trump's. Other than Trump, yeah. No, this one is way better. It's oh my god, it's brilliant. But you kind of got to know Cthulhu. I was hoping you would know who he was. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I've let you down. It yeah. interestingly when so we mentioned at the top of the show that I was in Texas 
last week. So obviously, apart from Austin, I believe Texas is a firmly Republican state. Um, so chatting to a couple of people that you, you just got the impression talking to them um, that they were Republicans, you know, maybe because they had guns coming out of everywhere and a few other things. And I purposely was not going anywhere on the, the politics chat my whole time there. But but they they brought up Trump or whatever, mainly because I had a T-shirt on that by all accounts had Trump's colours on. Uh, and and it, it wasn't a political T-shirt, but they're like, oh, that's a Trump t Oh, no, it's not. And I'm like, oh, God, that Pandora's box has been opened. Mm-hmm. Um, but this guy actually turned around and uh, said, uh, I'm all for it. I'm all for building the war. And I'm like, oh, God. Oh, God. How do I get myself out of this conversation? He went, oh, yeah, I'm all for the war, but not on the south border of Texas. On the north, he said, "If that if that fucking lunatic gets in, build a war at the north, and we'll just succeed and become our own republic." Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. that's the dream. So, like, okay, well, you know, even diehard Republicans are, you know, not totally blown away by this guy. So, no, I think that there's hope yet. There, is, I it's it's a it's a really really divisive, really divisive thing. Which again is why I call for the Dark Lord Cthulhu to come and just you know lay waste to the whole thing, um, but. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard a I've seen a few articles talking about uh, people in Texas saying you know they would secede or they would like to depend. It didn't matter which candidate. Like there was people saying if right. Hillary gets in, then we're out. There was people saying if Trump gets in, then we're out. And I think that just speaks to like I said, like how polarizing this thing is, and that I think a lot of people in that country are feeling really let down by their system and by their candidates. You know, so it's like. And that I think again just speaks to the the how crazy of a system it is. The two party system clearly doesn't work, and it's been even further you know hindered by the money that's been put into it and how it's run by money and media and, and the rest of it. So this it could be a shakeup. I'll say this on I'll say this on the air um, again. Our, our friend Steve from Where's My Glasses fame um, he predicted. Trump. The end of the world, because I think it's coming. <laughs> Cthulhu, man. Cthulhu. Look it up. Cthulhu 2016. I think you'd be a big supporter. I think you'd be okay. into the platform. Let, let, well, let's, let's tweet out a link from our account. Get it out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Cthulhu's on, he's on Twitter. I, okay. Yeah, well, I, I'll I do that after the show, our listeners. So yeah. watch this space. I think one of the taglines is, uh, it's like, rather than go for the lesser of two evils, go for the most evil. <laughs> and then it's like maybe, maybe maybe we need to do we need to endorse a candidate maybe that I've just said mine Cthulhu I'm okay. all done. <laughs> Cthulhu 26 I thought about buying a t-shirt it was like 20 bucks I was like should I buy a shirt um, <laughs> if, I, if I knew who he was I'd be tempted yeah <laughs> anyway so, so Steve yeah this, this man for those of you that don't know Steve the man's an oracle yeah yeah I think that's the best way to describe uh, it and a, and a real truth teller Wow. This is, I can see where you get it from. This is where so, I learned my truth telling so Let's ways. just make this clear that Steve, albeit an oracle, is not affiliated with this show directly. Uh, so anything he says, it might be slightly slanderous. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't come back on us. And if it is going to come back on one of us, uh, it's Flash's feature, this one. So, Flash, over to you. All right. Steve's, uh, Steve's prediction for the campaign was that Trump has one big trick up his sleeve and that he's going to swoop in like days before the actual vote and drop this bombshell of a thing, whatever it is, some some big secret, some big information that he's got some on Hillary or something like this, and that that's going to just swing the vote at the last second, and he's going to win. Steve thinks Trump's going to win with a big last second power play, and uh, and he, you know what? I I believe he did say, you know what? I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Let's shake this. Let's shake this bitch up. I think is what he said. <laughs> Was this before or after Trump made the statement of "Why can't I use the nukes"? <laughs> I haven't heard that one, so I don't. know. You haven't heard that one? Oh, yeah, God. yeah. But by all accounts, in a press conference, he was on about you know all the trouble in the world, and he's like, "Well, I'll just use use the nukes." And then obviously, somebody whispers here, going, "You cannot." And he's like, "Why can't I use the nukes? Oh, we got them. Why can't I use them?" Yeah, I did. I did. Yes, I did see a little bit about that, and I saw a really good. Um, I'll try and find it and tweet it out, but I, I saw a really good uh, a guy I made a series of tweets, and I can't remember what his his qualifications were, but it was working in the government high up, you know, defense ministry, where he basically outlined. It's like I don't know if he understands what like the whole concept of nuclear deterrence and why it works and why it's kept everybody safe 
from nuclear bombs for the last like 30 <laughs> years, you know, and he just like clearly just went through it. It's like if you use it or you even threaten to use it, the whole thing falls apart and you bring us to the brink of nuclear war, you know, like, uh, yeah. so, oh, wow, what a, what a world. Uh, yeah, well, it might not be a world much longer if that guy's in charge of the big red button. So yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. Wow. So yes, I did hear about that, and I believe that Steve's comments were uh, made after this. And uh, Steve also showed me a hilarious video <laughs> called "Sassy Trump." Somebody's gone through and overdubbed a real sassy voice uh, over Trump's actual speeches. So it's this exact transcript. It's the exact transcript of what he's saying, just in a hilarious, sassy voice. I implore you all to look it up. Sassy Trump. Hilarious. And then you actually... You're saying he doesn't sound sassy already? No. No, no, no. No, this is way sassier. Way sassier. Um, But it actually... I found it was good because I could actually then tolerate listening to the speech for at least a little bit longer. And then still, like, you know, getting to hear exactly what the words... like. Hearing how many words he uses to say absolutely nothing, it's it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. But should should we move on to brighter brighter topics? Well, yeah. If, if yeah, if if listeners haven't slashed their wrist by now or aren't busy building nuclear bunkers, then yeah, why why, why not? Which might not be a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm podcasting from the table and some of the 50s videos were ducking cover under the table. So yeah, yeah. should nuclear war start, I'm fine. I've got a wooden got wooden a, table to protect me. Got a so, wooden table. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, well, yeah, I, I'm going to be screwed. We're right next to Russia, so as Russia's you know making their preemptive move to uh, right ahead of the U.S. election. Um, you know, Germany, we're basically just the tripwire forces for NATO. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and Germany don't have a good history with, you know, international events and things like that. But I, so here's a, it's a very loose segue, but you can see where I go on this. So if you do need to escape the nuclear war, then you need, you need a car and you need it fast. That's what right. better than Uber? I hear they're great. Yeah, yeah. What better than calling for an Uber to get your way? Um, who have announced that at the end of uh, it's either this month or next month they will be launching uh, self-driving cars. What? Which I find slightly amazing, considering there's not a manufacturer that really has these cars. Yeah. Who's, out there yet? So who's they, cars? Out, who's who's self-driving so it's be, technology? Uh, it's going to be the Ford. I think based on the Ford Fusion to start with. Um, so for the initial rollout, uh, they'll still have a driver, but the driver will just be there to pick up the slack in the case of an emergency. Because um, I thought then, this was like the best move. This would be like the best move because isn't the worst part of Uber is that you got to like talk to the guy and that he well, might be no, a weirdo or... <laughs> all, the Uber dri- all the Uber drivers I've had, they're basically told you don't talk unless you're spoken to. That's a good rule. Which, yeah, I think, <laughs> I think it's a good it is a good rule. So by all accounts, it's going to start with Ford, but then they've also signed a deal with Volvo, who I think are like big pioneers of this technology. And I actually met a guy last year who's one of the software engineers working on this. But basically, they've signed a deal for like a load of S- Volvo SUVs that will then be their fleet in the future. So I'm just a little bit scared of, A, well, there's not any other self-drive cars out there at the moment. And I think they're going to, it's going to trial in Pittsburgh, I think, in Pennsylvania. But also, ultimately... Doesn't this scupper their business model? Yeah, this is exactly what I was saying. So like, because why wouldn't I just buy a self-drive car and then I could always just have that with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I've had, I've had a few drinks. I'll just call the car and it'll come and pick me up. Yeah, it'll just drive me home. I'll just sit why in the do back. I need, Yeah, why do I need an Uber? Yeah, and and the whole idea of like Uber was like allowing people to make money on the sides, but now like if you hire a self-driving Uber, who gets the money? Uber. Yeah, yeah, I'm guessing they're not donating it to the yeah. thousands of drivers they've made redundant. With so they get everybody to sign up to their shit and get like all this capital to be a big company. And then they use that capital to basically lay off their entire work. <laughs> hey, it's, the Amer- it's the American way. And, you know, it, it is. It definitely is. And I mean, Uber's been... Uh, allegedly. Uh, allegedly. Sorry. Uber's been uh, accused of being uh, a bit cutthroat and shady in the past, so... 
if this was their move all along, I'm kind of impressed. But <laughs> <laughs> they were just playing the long game. Yeah, exactly. But it, I think that I mean, self-driving cars. I'm all on board for it. I think that's the way to go. I think it's wave of the future, dude. Wave of the future. And uh, it's about it's it's about time. I mean, we'll see how the legislation works. Again, like I said, Uber has had trouble getting perfectly legal with human drivers in a lot of cities and countries and whatnot. So to do it now with to be the first to to roll it out with self-driving cars, uh, we'll see how well that works for them. But well, especially when they've they've announced it at the time when Tesla have come under fire recently. Haven't Tesla had two alleged deaths due to failure of their autopilot yeah, yeah, yeah. system. So from a media marketing point of view, it doesn't seem the right time to then say, hey, drunk, need a lift home? How about this? You may or may not die. I, I don't know if that's the tagline they're going to go with on their marketing. If they want it, they can have it. Yeah, you know, yeah, pay, yeah. Me a, pay me a small royalty. Yeah. But, you know, I, I'm not sure that's the best way they want to go. Ah, I don't Maybe it, Maybe it is a good time to be like, hey, that happened, but we'll do it better. Or you know, just sort of keep forging ahead with the, with the with the technology. It might not be good for if this is where, which I honestly think it is. This is where we're moving, and these people are banking on being the first, you know, in the market, so to speak. You might not want to be too gun shy over what two deaths, eh, two deaths, seatbelts, you know, were a lot. You know, when they before they made seatbelts, you know, people were putting up with. You know, however many deaths and how many deaths do we have from normal driving cars? You know, like the car accident deaths. Is that really going to scare people off? Doesn't scare us all off from jumping in the car and flying down the highway now. You know, so. That's true. But yeah, that's true. Considering how, and I actually thought today, actually, considering how dangerous it is, you, you always assume that you're going to get to your destination, don't you? Yeah. Where, you know, statistically, there is that chance that you're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think especially about it every if you're time I get especially in the car. if you're driving in a Tesla. But, uh, <laughs> well, well, look, at, we probably lost, we probably lost that sponsor now. Yeah, probably, I was yeah. going to say, well, edit that bit out, edit that bit out, because <laughs> I, I, I'd quite like a Tesla if, if it was free. I I'd drive one if they would let me drive. To hell with the risks. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I think it's a it's an interesting move. Like we should be following that. Um, we should be following that for updates to see how it goes. We could do a yeah, we could do an accident tracker on that. We oh, we could yeah. yeah. It wouldn't quite be up there with the uh, Ebola update, yeah. but we could definitely definitely keep an eye on it. Okay, well then, moving into the Ebola update, you want to hear some Ebola news? It's oh, it's been a yeah, while. What, uh, yeah, go for it. And actually, I just caught something on the news earlier about it as well. So I wonder if it's the same thing. Oh, my my little tidbit was about. Um, They've done a a study of uh, they were looking at blood samples that were taken during the the, the big outbreak, obviously, and what they found was that uh, those patients that were co-infected with malaria, so that had malaria, the blood parasite, um, at the same time that they had Ebola, were more likely to survive. So, out of the samples that had both, I think it was. Um, so if they were co-infected? Yeah, 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 yeah. So the wow. the samples that they, they looked at, you know, the group of samples, like it's like a thousand samples. Um, they looked at the ones that had malaria and then the ones that didn't have malaria. And out of the group that had malaria, I think it was like uh, 20% more of them survived versus the group that didn't have malaria. So there was a, a, a significant bump in survival rates when you had malaria. And I was, so I was thinking about it and I was like, you know, trying to, I did a quick Google search on like exactly how Ebola kills you and all this stuff. Like, you know, like the, you the, went for the cheery stuff. Yeah. I went, for, I went for the real nuts and bolts of it, you know, because for those that don't know, malaria is a blood parasite. So it infects red blood cells and, you know, multiplies inside of them kind of like a virus and then bursts the red blood cells and goes off to infect other red blood cells. But Red blood cells that are infected with malaria tend to be more rigid and they stick to the sides of the vessels more. So they're like stiffer and sticky. So they kind of clump and clot a bit. And I thought, okay, well, maybe this is the mechanism for the... Because right. they don't really know the mechanism of why malaria might infer some better survivability of Ebola. 
But um, this is just me, you know, spouting out ideas here because my original thought was, okay, they're clumpy. Maybe that stops you from bleeding out of all of your orifices and all this, you know, because you, you, <laughs> your malaria blood, your mal- stick with me here. Your malaria blood is a bit more sticky. Stick with you. See what you've done there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I just come up with this shit, you know. It's just, this is just stream of consciousness. A, a humoral response. Yeah, uh, very nice, very nice. You Brits are always about the good pun, right? Well, that, that's that's about the end of my immunology. If if Jess, the listener we mentioned at the front, is is listening, she can tweet back to this because she's the immunologist. Right. Well, she is definitely she is definitely not a parasitologist. <laughs> so. um, yeah. So I don't know. Like maybe it's that. But then I was like looking into like how Ebola kills you, and Ebola actually causes clotting and uh, viscosity um, of the blood vessels. So you get, it'll cause some clotting in your blood, but then because your blood vessels are leaky, it causes the ruptures, which shoots the blood. That's why you get bleeding out of all the aforementioned orifices. So I don't know. It's an interesting, it's an interesting thing. And I mean, the, 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 the study of co-infection is, I don't know, it's pretty big in the parasitology fields that we yeah. look at and sort of any, um, disease research field, because it's, a uh, we found time and time again that, like, you know, we're, we're never infected with just one thing, right? Like, any animal is, always has multiple, um, you know, bacteria or whatever it is going on inside their body. So how these things interact, it's like, you know, your own little ecosystem in there. So there's definitely different players will affect different things. And if you had to pick between malaria and surviving Ebola, you know, get a little malaria, no problem. And it... And it didn't go the other way. If you had Ebola, you were less likely to get malaria. Presumably yeah, not. but they, I don't think they had any way to test that uh, in this sample that they were doing. Because it was like samples drawn from Ebola people and they were looking at right. it post and then just correlating it back to their infection status you know, or their survival status. So you, there would be no way of knowing that. And, then, and they did look at, um, they said that as anyone that came in for treatment during the Ebola outbreak was given anti-malarials. But that seemed to have no effect on 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 anything, which I thought was kind of interesting because it's like maybe they were if they were curing this malaria, maybe they actually condemned a lot more people to die. Yeah, because yeah. they didn't have That's the protective. Yeah, you know, which and I mean it's obviously way too early to 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 tell all of this, and maybe it's just a weird correlation. Maybe it's something else, but it's kind of an interesting story. And it's just again, like I've said a, a number of times, the. The, the Ebola outbreak was terrible, obviously, but you were learning so much more because it was such a big sample size, really. Like, you know, it's the first time that that disease has yeah. gotten that, that many numbers. So learning a lot about Ebola and malaria co-infection might be, might be good. So, hey, who knows? Well, yeah, well, yeah, and I wondered about the, re- the reverse being true because obviously at the moment, you know, the big push is to find a vaccine for malaria, isn't it? So I was wondering if if the reverse went that way because there there is an experimental Ebola vaccine I believe yep. if that would then have use on the malaria side but you know it sounds as if maybe not but then you wonder if this will now fuel even more research into the malarial vaccine because maybe then there's an you know if they're triggering an immune response and there's yeah yeah, yeah. That, if that's one of the mechanisms if it's not if it's just down to the physical presence of the parasite then Maybe not, but yeah, that'd be an interesting one to see. Yeah, and that's a good point, actually, because that's totally what I was looking at it from was just the physical presence of the parasite. Like, and and I thought too, maybe it's just like a competition for for space, even you know. But but yeah. Ebola doesn't just attack blood cells; it attacks sort of all the tissues of the body. And right, so it's I, I think that's a stupid theory. There's another. Well, so the Ebola story that I had was nowhere near as scientific and in-depth. So it, um, I just saw on the news today the, the nurse, I can't remember her name, the British nurse that came back oh, uh, right, right, with, right. with Ebola and then had two regrets. So it turns out she's being put up in front of the Nursing and Midwifery Council next week or next month, um, basically for not to de- not declaring when she re-entered the country that she actually had a high temperature, uh-huh. which obviously being an Ebola nurse, you probably should. She should have known. Yeah. Um, probably in denial. Also, well, and also allegedly not declaring that she'd um, been taking paracetamol, so uh, acetaminophen, which obviously has the effect huh? of lowering uh, your body temperature. What's acetaminophen? Um, 
Uh, is it Tylenol in the US? Paracetamol oh. is what it's called over here. I don't uh, know what it's called in Canada. Uh, um, we have Tylenol in Canada. Okay, so it's an antipyretic, effectively, so it'll bring your body temperature down. So she didn't declare, A, she had high temperature originally, B, she'd been taking drugs to lower her body temperature, and then C, by all accounts, the guy that took her temperature wrote it down wrong, he wrote it down lower, and she didn't correct him. Ah. Um, but somehow this has all just come out, and it's actually come out today by accident, because they published it on their website, on the Nursing and Midwifery Council website, by accident, that she was up on this disciplinary charge. Jeez, sounds like these nurses and midwives and their midwifery council need to get their shit together over there. Yeah, sounds like a real conspiracy theory going on. So, yeah. So, yeah, nowhere near scientific and in-depth. It fuels the conspiracy theories out there a little bit. Yeah, that's a a weird one. They got to get their shit together. Not not giving midwives a a good name. But I guess it's nurses and midwives, so not giving nurses yeah. a good name for that matter. But, you know, if she can't even get the temperature stuff right and can't even get the reporting stuff right, is it any wonder she actually got Ebola? <laughs> She's probably down there just, you know, walking around without the space suit on, shaking hands with everybody, eating an ice, licking an ice cream cone. Jeez, it's hot here. It's so, it's so hot in here. Why are we wearing all this plastic? Is that red sauce on the ice cream? No, it's blood. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> Look at this raspberry. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, maybe that's biology selection of the fittest. Yeah, well, just trying to take her out right there. Well, well, we'll see. What, what do you what do you figure we got time for? Because uh, we can jump into one more biology, or I got another disease story. Well, that, that, I'm all for it. Let's let's try and touch on both. Let's do it quick. Let's go for it. Okay, okay. Um, we'll, make, we'll make this a bumper episode for the fans. All right, sounds good. Um, I like how we're a bit more prepared now, too, with uh, stuff to talk about. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I did. Yeah, cause we, we've improvised the uh, the previous four, so uh, yeah, it's good that we've done some planning. Yeah. I did at least four minutes of planning before we went live. Okay, so. I, I got a good like 40 minutes in, so... That's about the only time that sentence has ever been said. <laughs> hey, oh, uh, that, that British wit that I just absolutely love. Um, <laughs> you said that in such a, uh ironic and deadpan tone. <laughs> it's almost as if you were taking the piss out of me. Yeah, I'll let you be the judge. I'll let the listeners be a judge. Yeah. Hashtag taking yeah, a piss, question mark. Yeah. Or hashtag not taking the piss. Yeah. <laughs> And let's get that trending. Yeah. So uh, yeah, sounds good. No, I mean we. I got more um, fear mongering disease stories to 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 spread, um, spread like the disease. You didn't mention my pun there. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, this one's about yellow fever. You know yellow fever? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yellow fever is actually it's well, it's a virus transmitted by mosquitoes. It's um, related to the Zika virus. But it's much more deadly, so you can actually die from it. By all accounts, it doesn't mess up unborn babies, but you just die instead. So take your pick, I guess. Um, <laughs> mortality rate, fatality rate is about twenty percent. So it's not as bad as Ebola, but it's a pretty nasty, pretty nasty um, disease. Also causes bleeding out of various orifices, uh, high fever, and the rest of it. But there's currently an outbreak of this going on in Central Africa at the moment. Um, uh-huh. They'd actually declared the outbreak in February, and it has been picking up steam. And various NGOs, Doctors Without Borders, and a few others are now undertaking the largest, um, one of the largest um, vaccine programs uh, in history. So they're aiming to inoculate 14 million people in over 8,000 wow. locations in um, Central Central Africa. So I believe it has just shifted into Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, and I can't remember where it started, but a country right next to that. So it's a mosquito-borne virus. Um, it's running wild. The, you know, the alarmists out there will say, if we don't get this under control, it could spread to Europe to, you know, various other continents with the mosquitoes, just like Zika, right? I mean, yellow fever is common in South America. You don't see a lot of outbreaks of it because they do vaccinate there and they do take control. They try and get rid of the mosquitoes, you know, but, um, 
this is just like Zika. It's with the increase in urban areas, increased travel between all these places, and with climate change, it's like perfect breeding ground for these mosquitoes. So mosquito-borne viruses, you know, Zika is sort of the poster child right now, and it's you can see how it's spread all around the world, you know. Well, in comparison, Zika ain't shit on yellow fever. So, <laughs> you know, let's... It's a, it's a turf war. It is. It is. It totally is. Uh, who's hot right now? Zika's hot right now? Well, but, literally, anyone that's carrying the virus is hot. Yeah. That's the nature of infection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, yellow fever is is looking to take its place in the headlines. And again, it's one of those things that it's it's unfortunate, but because it's in poorer places in Africa, we, you know, this has been going on since February and it hasn't right, really, yeah, exactly. really talked and about I've it. Right, yeah, exactly. And I've not heard anything of it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so, but... Who knows? So we so we could have the yellow fever update as a regular segment going forward. I so say we just there, there is some good to come out of it. You know, exactly, we get material. We get material. So. I think we just need to have viral updates in general. You know, um, we could just go through and track. Not them literally on. us. Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't need to get tested. I'm clean. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. So that's what a lot of the Russians athletes said as well. Yeah, right? exactly. No, I just thought that was interesting because, you know, not only is yeah, it the yeah, biggest, no, the biggest, you know, vaccine rollout programs are really ambitious. Um, and I mean, in some countries they were having to say, like, give them like one tenth or one quarter the actual effective dose. So they figure that it oh, will really? give people, it will only confer immunity for like a year. But because supplies are so short, they have to make them right. stretch out, right? So, But, but isn't there an, an issue with the vaccine? Because I know... Some countries, if you've been vaccinated against yellow fever, they won't let you out of the airport because you carry, it must be a live vaccine, I'm guessing, mm. attenuated vaccine. So effectively, you're still classed as a carrier, so they won't won't let you out of the airport hmm. uh, or even off the plane in some cases. I don't, I don't know. My only experience, I've been vaccinated for it when I went down to Brazil about like 10 years ago. And that explains a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I, you know, we, we got the vaccine and then obviously I I didn't go the next day, but it was a requirement. Like we had to get it. We had to get, and we had to have proof of vaccination. Proof that, yeah. Yeah. So that, I mean, maybe, maybe 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 that's that's it. it. Maybe that's, maybe that's what I'm referring to. Yeah. Yeah, It's been a long day, listeners. I apologize if I've, uh, (laughs) don't take your medical vaccination advice from me. That's what, (laughs) that's what medical professionals are there for. Hey, I'll say you heard it here first. Quality truth telling on this program. <laughs> I've done forty minutes of research on all this. I would I would say we've neither provided quality or really the truth in a lot of these matters. But yeah, the truth is also as far as I know it. Hey, if Trump if Trump can get away with that kind of shit, then I should be able to. Well, yeah, that's true. It's the truth Trump's as far as I know it. Trump's got like a billion dollars behind him, and that tends to buy you a lot of truths, from what I've heard, <laughs> allegedly. That's true. That's true. Well, I haven't released my tax statements either, so you know, nobody well, I, really knows. There's a lot. There's a lot of things I don't want you to release, Flash, <laughs> and that's one of them. So, oh yeah, really? What's the others? I don't know. We'll just leave it there. <laughs> we'll leave it for another segment. Yeah, we don't want to go into that murky field of you spreading things around. <laughs> Not again. Not after the last time. Yeah. Because it all cleared up last time and it never really hit the headlines. So let's not bring it up again. Let's not touch that. Uh, Don't touch that, in fact. <laughs> that, that, would have, that would have stopped the spread of the disease in the first place. If you would have just not rubbed it. <laughs> oh, that was the fun part. <laughs> okay, this is getting off the rails here. I can I can tell. <laughs> And I don't know what your excuse is. My whiskey's done, but I don't know what your excuse is. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm going dry. Well, not dry, but orange squash. That's yeah, no excuse there. Okay. Well, my friend, um, maybe maybe we should wrap this thing up. Except that I do have one one last thing, and this is a direct. I've talked to a few people directly. Boris being one of them t- tonight, and I've got a direct challenge for you. Okay. When I was in Bring it on. When I was in the UK, I noticed you had this, these plants growing. You, I don't know if you want to call it a garden. You had some greenery attempting to sprout outside of your house. I, I hope I hope at some point you're going to clarify what plants I've got growing otherwise <laughs> I'm either A going to get a drugs raid or B done over by the local gangsters. <laughs> well, if you're, I don't if, know. You're, if you're talking about my 
vegetable garden. Is that what you're alluding to? I don't know. You had a funny name for it. It looked like a zucchini plant to me. Uh, yeah, it's called a courgette plant. That's the English term for right. it. Well, the proper term is zucchini. And but, uh, I have one as well. My, well, I say I have one. Me and my lovely girlfriend, Teresa, have a, okay. a, a nice and ripe zucchini plant. And I'm challenging you to the zucchini slash courgette grow off. Winner okay. gets to winner ha- gets to impose the name, and the other person has Ooh. to for the rest of their life use that name. <laughs> oh, that! If there ever there was inspiration to win, that was it. There, <laughs> God, I'm not sure I could go through life calling it a zucchini without <laughs> a being laughed at or b being beaten up. Hey, man! Ooh. You better get your okay. you better get your grow on. Okay, so so, and what's the criteria going to be? The the most number or the biggest or this? I guess we have to figure out because um, I started a bit ahead of you, so I think the easiest so, way to do it. So, then how now, far ahead of how far ahead are you? Because I think I planted mine like five weeks ago. Uh, I don't know when I planted mine, but I know okay. that I've harvested. I have three on the on the plant right now that are growing, and we've already taken one off. But we're going to scratch that first one because it was not measured or anything. <laughs> so, Number of times I've heard that. <laughs> so so we can go with this. So we won't, I don't know what you want to do. So we'll give your plant a chance to sprout all the fruit that it can or vegetable that it can. And then uh, okay. what I say, we just, we measure them all. We post pictures on Instagram and Twitter under the great grow off or something like this some name to be determined so are we gonna th- are we gonna throw this open to the the public to vote on the <laughs> finest because the, the worry is with a courgette if you let it get too big it then turns into a marrow which nobody wants that nobody wants a marrow yeah you're talking foreign language to me here man i just look at my zucchini you know, and how good they get and then i pluck them off and bring them to the local okay, town well, fair to win medals bro Okay, well, that, that's maybe okay. That's maybe a good place to start. Let's have a look. I don't know if it's a big thing where you are, but in the UK, it's a big thing to have gardening shows where they have criteria for the best veg. So I can do some research to see what the defining character. It's a bit like a breed standard for a dog. What's the defining characteristics for a courgette? It's right, right, a right. Long, slender body with a bulbous end. Yeah. <laughs> nice flower on the end of it. Yeah. But yeah, okay. Let's. I say we well, do. We have also, different categories. We do that, and then we have the 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 vote. Okay, and we'll we'll throw it out to the public as a, as a vote. Okay, well, uh, let's definitely have the challenge between us. But I'd also like to um, call out to any of the listeners to uh, send in some pictures. Yeah, tweet tweet in some pictures, and maybe maybe we need a, a two Brad for you Instagram account as well. Yeah, may, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, to get this ball ball rolling, so yeah, get, let's get some listener pictures in of your courgettes or zucchinis. So we can see, you know, the quality that you know the quality that's out there in the wider field. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then obviously we'll have the Canadian Russian ice hockey event between us that we don't invite <laughs> anyone else to. Uh, but you know, we'll, we'll take note of what's going on in the outside world, but we're not really going to care about it. Yeah, well, because you know, we're that we're inferior. And we've got a bit of the complex about it. Hey, get your own podcast and start your own rivalries and slander other people. Yeah. Boom. Okay. What? Well, okay. Yeah. Okay. That sounds like a good competition. So. Uh, the summary I have then, so that's let's let's if we're going to wrap this one up. Uh, so the first point is effectively, um, Flash is a uh, legal and potentially slanderous maverick. <laughs> and I, you know, I, I, I would like that on a t-shirt. Truth Flash teller. is a maverick. Truth teller. Mm, mm, one man's truth teller is another man's libel slanderous nightmare. <laughs> um, but I, I'd like to see maybe your name on a t-shirt, just on a t-shirt, not in court. Um, to start with, let's start with a t-shirt. Um, second is that, you know, we're not afraid to go after the listener and too bad for you might be willing to consider endorsing a U.S. presidential candidate. Yep. Uh, if the price is right. If the price is right. So hey, it's U.S. politics. You got to get paid. Well, obviously there's a lot of money going around. Why shouldn't we be getting some of it? Exactly. Um, so, you know, that's out there. Uh, and then the last one I had is, um, don't forget the hashtags of taking the piss or hashtag not taking the piss. <laughs> Uh, so that's out there as well, and then obviously we've got the uh, the courgette challenge or the zucchini. There's nothing to alliterate with Z, is there? So uh, the courgette challenge. Zucchinis in the zeitgeist. The zeit. No, that doesn't work. Yeah, see, it doesn't work, does it? <laughs> so, courgette challenge. 
zucchini grow off. It'll always be zucchini grow off. <laughs> the courgette is fighting for its life here. Yeah, yeah. Come on, people, get behind it. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, and then we had a, we had the resurgence of an Ebola update, and um, oh yeah, and um, some yellow fever fear mongering. So, and the, let's not forget Uber. Uber was in there too. Yeah. So yeah, that's what, it's always good to you know get a bit of fear out into the uh, the nation to you know ramp up numbers if if nothing else. Yeah. 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 You know, we want to get so, we want to get blood boiling, but not in the malaria or Ebola or yellow fever sense. <laughs> and if you do, take some paracetamol, yeah. acetaminophen, Tylenol, whatever they call it. And for, it will help lower the temperature. For God's sakes, report it when you come into the country. You're not yeah. doing anybody yeah. any favors. Yeah, exactly. And get some malaria because that might save your life. Yeah, it's true. It's again, don't take your medical advice <laughs> from Flash or I. No, no, no. I'd say, I'd say, I'd say, get, ma- I'd say get malaria. Yeah. I was going to say, when the first listener dies, they can uh, tweet in, but obviously if they're dead, probably not going to hear too yeah. much from them. Their mourning so. loved ones will, will see all these downloaded episodes of this podcast on their device <laughs> and take a listen and be like, yeah, I'm going to tweet at those assholes. And yeah. we'll say, yeah. well, well, thanks for the tweet. Glad you listened. Yeah, well, well you'll see those people when you're in court. <laughs> so uh, that's that's fine. So uh, we should just give a, a shout out to those, you know, listeners, get involved. Uh, this, this show is... Primarily for you, uh, you know, Flash and I, we, we do this because we love doing it, but, you know, we're doing it hopefully to entertain, potentially educate, but don't, again, listen to Flash so much. So <laughs> get involved with the, the show. You can uh, tweet me personally at Bradley W. Hayes, uh, or you can tweet the show at Too Brad For You. Uh, Flash, do you want to give a shout out? Yeah. I'm, Try and get some more more ratings and more followers? Yeah, I'm uh, Twitter at B Van Paradon, all one word. I believe I'm on Instagram as the same thing too. Ooh. So yeah, there you go. Hit me up. Okay, yeah, and, and keep your eye on the the. Uh, I almost said the Twitter. Then keep your eyes on the, the Twitter, and maybe we should set up an Instagram account for our uh, courgette <laughs> challenge. It, well, it'll be too bad for you. Like if somebody stumbles upon this Instagram account, they'll be like, "Too bad for you. what is this? It's just pictures of zucchini." <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, it's going to have a sexual element to it now, isn't it? It's. <laughs> I want to throw it out there and see if we can get the random comments on our veg. Hey, or, or, you know, actually, I'm not going to go there. I might have a little trick up my sleeve to uh, ensure the name of the yeah, courgette lives on forever. <laughs> but uh, we'll see. We'll see if I can put it off or not. Oh, right. All right. Right on, man. Okay. Well, good chatting with you as always. Uh, I look forward to next time when there's all sorts of, you know, bright cheerful lovely news that we have to discuss bring it on take care my friend and i'll catch you on the loop next time all right sounds good take care